Hey, Wolfpack, Angela Wolf here, and I finished my top from last week. If you've missed that episode, this pink leopard top I've had for years, uh, it's been in the closet, but it was too short. So I took a sweater. I didn't need the bottom binding, which you'll see in a second, and I cut it up, made it longer. I actually gave myself about three and a half inches of length. So it turned out super cute. I'm ready to wear it, and it'll look great underneath one of my black sweaters. Ew. Well, I'll show you it in a second. So today, uh, I was just talking to a friend about making bathing suit cover-ups. So there was this great episode on It's So Easy. I snagged the video. So I will be joining you live during this, and I will take a break and take your questions. So first off, let me show you this top. So grab your tea, say hi. Wolfpack, it's so nice to see you, and I will be right back. <laughs> wearing leggings today but this will look cute with jeans too so this went from being super short i added this much length and now it's plenty long so take a look there's the back there's the front i even have a little bit more fabric if i want to add anything else but do i get a like on this one i think so let me know because in the video i'll see if you like it or not <laughs> I would love to see what your thoughts are on this. And you know, I have another piece of fabric. Okay, I didn't need this because it was already long enough. So now I can save this with the sleeves to add to something else, right? And I have one more piece, this piece here, and you all can vote on it. Just leave me a comment or uh, let me know. But I thought I could either add it as an extra on this side or maybe something up here to tie in with everything else. Yay or nay? Well, don't give me an unlike. I don't want an unlike on the video. <laughs> so yes to the addition or leave it the way it is. <laughs> all right, everyone, let me make sure I can see you all rolling it. So nice to see you all. Happy Wednesday. Karina, nice to see you. Oh gosh, yes. Uh, by the way, uh, yesterday's show was a lot of fun on Brothers Sews. If you saw that adorable little a uh, skirt that Emily made for a onesie. Perfect project for an upcoming gift, I think. All right, so before we start looking at this kimono, I want to show you what I've been working on on my embroidery machine. So let me just take you back here and give you a quick tour of what's happening behind the scenes. All right, let's wake this machine up so this is a design it was built into the well it is built into the luminaire and it takes it took about 35 minutes for each one it took three six i'm counting eight thread changes of course if you did this on the 10 needle it'd be way faster but i was using my luminaire and i want i'm using the magnetic hoop here and i just finished so I'll take this out to show you. What do you think? So this is embroidered on black tulle. It's going to make an amazing sleeve. And I'm prepping for a class that will be next January, just to give you a little hint. But uh, you know I love embroidery on tulle. So there you go. So this, I was able to slide this down very easily in this magnetic frame. And now I have a full sleeve. So that's what I'm working on. Now you know what I have to do? I have to make the other sleeve. So I only have one finished. But you know, while I was cleaning the studio, which I don't know if you noticed, it looks awfully clean over there. That's about as clean as you're gonna get. <laughs> I have the tool fabric on there uh, because I'm getting ready to lay out sleeve number two. So um, it was cleaner a couple days ago. Once I start sewing and throwing, it ends up looking like that. All right, so let me see if you have any questions for me. We're going to, I want to share this video with you. It's a one on doing a kimono. You might have seen this on It's So Easy. Maybe everybody's saying you like it. Perfect. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. I guess it's fine with or without it. I guess I don't know. Very fun. Hey, Amy, that embroidery design is built into the luminaire. 
So I, I don't know if it's on um, iBroidery. I can check. Uh, Victoria, what stabilizer for the, um, the tool? Um, hold on, I'll show you. If you want to come over here. I have this on my website. Sew and wash. It feels like fabric. And then it just washes away. So I will layer this underneath the tool and I will embroider the entire sleeve and then wash it away. So I'll probably finish the other sleeve and then wash them both away at the same time. But this is it. Sew and wash. And I did have a 20% off coupon on this on my website for last week. And since you just asked, why don't I extend it till Sunday? So that way, if you need it, you can still get a discount. All right. I know it did embroider and you know what? It didn't pucker or anything. I mean, it worked out great. That magnetic hoop, if you have an opportunity to get a magnetic hoop like that, it just keeps everything really tight. I don't have to worry about the fabric ripping or stretching out or anything like that. It works great. Thanks, Jody. And I just got your email, so I'll be taking care of that. Hi, Esther. I think so too, Star. I think it's going to look great. And Helen, good luck cleaning. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, Mary, I'm sorry that we'll miss you in Fashion Sewing Club. So this afternoon, those of you in Fashion Sewing Club, don't forget we have our monthly live Q&A where you can ask any questions on sewing, fitting, and show off what you've been sewing. We've had a lot going on in the Fashion Sewing Club. So this is actually what brought this up, Mary. You make me think of this. All right, so you might have seen me make this. Or I hemmed this top. Okay, I'll bring this down. I hemmed this top live with all of you on behind the scenes. But I designed the top and sewed the neckline on Fashion Sewing Club. So you can still go back and see this full episode. I love the neckline here. So when I tried it on, I think I made it a little too big. I mean, I guess I wanted it to be loose, but I didn't want to look like I could put two of me in here. So now I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board take out the elastic and slim down the sides a little bit. I mean, I wanted it big and loose, but I actually could fit Wynn and I both in here. Now that would be a whole fashion show, huh? I don't think I'm gonna get Wynn to be wearing those stripes. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about that. Because that was a bathing suit cover up, I had a friend here the other day and we were talking about what would be a quick, easy thing to make to wear to the beach. So a lot of us might be going traveling this weekend for Memorial Day, maybe you're not, but maybe the sun's going to be out. So these glasses are terribly dirty. Hold that thought. <laughs> so I was thinking, I have to find my kimono that I made on It's So Easy TV. All right. Oh, thanks, Lorraine. Cindy, I don't know if it's on the still air. I could check for you. Do you have the still air? Um, if you want, I can put a photo of this in the Facebook group and then that way you can see exactly what the design is. Maybe that'll help. It's a very cute one. All right, so let's take a look. And now you can ask your questions live because if I was on It's So Easy, you'd be watching it on PBS. And no, I couldn't take your questions, but today I can. All right, so let me take this down, take your question down and let's take a look at how easy it is to make this top because since I can't find mine, I'm going to have to make another one. All right, here we go. Maybe. Hi, Angela Wolf here, fashion designer and online instructor, and this entire lesson is on style. This is a great cover up you can make by draping. It's a square of fabric, and you can see there's little stitches here for your armholes. Let me show you how to make this. To get started, pick a lightweight fabric. I have another option here just so you can see. This is a polyester chiffon. If I can reach my hand in there, you can just barely see my hand, but the drape is gorgeous. Throw it in the wash, the dryer, it never wrinkles. This is a gauze fabric, which you can see through just a little bit more. It drapes beautifully also. So to get started, you need to decide this fabric I found that has an edging. So I have to figure where I want that to go on this design. So basically measure across your body and add, if you look on here, I added about 11, 12 inches from your shoulder out. So I'm just gonna drape this so you can see what's going on. Here's the rectangle. Find the center of the fabric. I have the fabric folded in half. 
Here's the center. I'm going to line it up the center with my green marking there. And let's just cut. Cut a hole for our head. Again, this fabric is folded in half. I'm just cutting both sides at the same time for that part. And now I'm just going to drape this on top. There we go. Again, if you don't have a dress form, you can do this. Just cut a circle in the center for your head to go over. That's pretty much what I'm doing. Uh, decide how wide you want it on the neckline. Don't go too far because it'll fall off your shoulders. And I'm just turning this as I go. Cutting around. All right, I'm taking a quick break. By the way, as I'm cutting that, I'm doing it on the dress form. So if you don't have a dress form, you can measure your neckline or you could use a pattern, lay your pattern on top of that so you can get the curve of a neckline. It's A neckline isn't a total circle. Remember, your back is more of like an oval and then the front goes down a little bit. So that's just an easy way in case you don't have a dress form. But the other thing, let's talk about fabric. That fabric I found in three different colors. <laughs> like, I don't know when that episode came out. I found it then at Fields Fabric in Holland. So they probably don't have it anymore. In fact, I think I bought all of it. <laughs> if I find it, I'll put it on the website and put it on the comments sold website on the app. So I'm cleaning out my fabric stash in the basement. I'll keep you posted. But the fabric was very thin. I pre-washed it because I wanted to make sure in case it shrunk. It was cotton, and it said 100% cotton. It almost feels like it has some silk in it, and it also feels a little bit like it has some linen. But whatever it is, it's very, very thin. So when I went to sew it and I went to cut it, you might see the little pieces of fabric frame. So depending on the fabric you choose for this, let me give you some ideas. Silk chiffon. That's the more expensive, <laughs> but it would look great. And if you wash it first, you can, Silk makes a great bathing suit cover up, but make sure you wash it and dry it first. Otherwise you could have problems. All right, what about just polyester chiffon? Well, if it's a bathing suit cover up, it's fine, right? It's something easy, will roll up, it won't wrinkle. Uh, usually polyester chiffon, unless depending on who the designer is, shouldn't be very expensive. So that's some ideas for you on choosing some other fabrics. You know, you could also use I used a sweater knit for this. You could also use a sweater, a sweater knit. It doesn't have to be stretch fabric. This was not stretch. Um, Trying to think if there's any other good ones. A knit would be fine. Mesh would be great. Are those enough ideas for you? All right, so let's take a look and see what else we have on here. A little snag there. And I'll go back around to this side. When you're all finished, you can take this off of the dress form, lay it on the table, make sure that your circle is symmetrical, I should say, because this is a little off, but you'll get the idea. Now, if you want a really easy project, put bias binding around that neckline, finish the edges like I show you how, and we're going to stitch right here to give you armholes, and you're finished. For this one, I cut it down the center from here down to make that opening. Either way, it's very easy. So hold this out, and you have to imagine your armhole is going to go right through here. So measure down, and it has to also get over your body, so you don't want the pins too close. I'm just going to measure down maybe about 12 inches and about 6 inches in from the fabric. Of course, depending on your size, you'll want to adjust that. But I'm just going to give myself a few pins to hold this in place. There you go. So I'm going to be stitching from here to here. You could stitch all the way down if you want, but I like to have the, the side open, and this is why. See how it drapes? Turn this just a little bit. So you can picture what I'm doing. I'm going to stitch from here to here. I end up with an arm hole opening, and then this drapes beautifully. So if you want to open one, just cut it all the way down. You can follow the grain line. And if you want it to have a, a nice straight line, go ahead and do it on the table. I'm just giving you an idea here. All right, so let's go to the table. I want to show you a few things here before we go to the sewing machine. First of all, for where you're going to sew 
ever wrinkles. This is a gauze. All right, hold on. I'm just taking you for a quick sec. I see Lil has a question here. 11 inches teat shoulder. Well, what I'm doing is making it very long. So it's going to hang over the edge of your sleeve. So your shoulders aren't really 11 inches. You're adding that extra fabric. Does that make sense? <laughs> and Karina says that we're joining. We're literally joining you for dinner. We're on the table. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So I think I just accidentally rewound this. So let's figure out where we were here. About right here. That looks good. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. It's very easy. So hold this out, and you have to imagine your armhole is going to go right through here. So measure down, and it has to also get over your body, so you don't want the pins too close. I'm just going to measure down maybe about 12 inches and about 6 inches in from the fabric. Of course, depending on your size, you'll want to adjust that. I'm just going to give myself a few pins to hold this in place. There you go. So I'm going to be stitching from here to here. You could stitch all the way down if you want, but I like to have the, the side open, and this is why. See how it drapes? Turn this just a little bit. I feel like it's Groundhog Day. Don't worry. I rewound just a little so you can bit. Picture what I'm doing. I'm going to stitch from here to pile. here. I end up with an arm hole opening, and then this drapes beautifully. So if you want to open one, just cut it all the way down. With really big scissors. Really big Follow scissors. the grain line. <laughs> and if you want it to have a, a nice straight line, go ahead and do it on the table. I'm just giving you an idea here. All right, so let's go to the table. I want to show you a few things here before we go to the sewing machine. First of all, for where you're going to sew these sleeves, you can see where I put my pins. And because it was draping, it doesn't quite look like everything is perfectly even. So what I want to do is just mark this a little bit. <laughs> and then line this fabric up because this was a straight rectangle. I agree, Susan. Big there scissors. scissors. So these, this edge lines up a little bit better. All By right, the way. give myself a few pins and I think this is the part of the episode where we're taping that live, right? And I'm trying to pin and that fabric so slippery. Now, if I was in my own studio, I wouldn't have been pinning. I would have had a pin at the top, a pin at the bottom and just made it work. But on TV, because all of you are watching and I'm moving from there to the sewing machine, I had to try to make it so you could see it. So I would call this my clumsy moment. Definitely my clumsy moment. The next thing that you want to do, and I've already cut this out, is cut out on the bias. You can see 45 degree angle. There's the salvage of the fabric. And you can see this was cut. This is the salvage. It's cut on a 45 degree angle. This will be the strap that hangs on the front if you decide to cut it open, or it could be a belt. And then you have another piece for the neckline to finish the neckline. So for the neckline part, you want to take this and press this fabric in half. I think I have it cut about two inches wide. That's a pretty safe bias trim. Fold it in half, give it a little pressing, and prep it to be attached to the neckline. And I'm just going to show you little parts that make the sewing of this project easier. I'm not going to sew the entire thing. You'll get the idea. So there's the bias. I have it folded in half and pressed. The next thing that you would want to do is go to the top, and I'm just going to do another little section here for you. All right, I'm going to stop because I see a question. How do you know where the bias is? So first of all, uh, <laughs> baby mama, I like your name. Okay, so first of all, you have salvages on each side of your fabric. So if you lay your fabric flat, you should have salvages on each side. So if you're cutting yardage, that's not the salvage I'm talking about. I'm talking about the salvage is the finished edge on each side of your fabric. If it's 44 inches wide, 60 inches wide, whatever that is. If you take one of those corners and fold it 45 degrees, right? Instead of having a square, you will have a perfect 45 degree angle. That's what you call the bias. So it's 45 degree angle. Basically, I try to go from side to side. So if you pull that fabric back, 
you'll end up just picture, you'll have a corner right here. Does that make sense? And then if you're trying to cut those two inch wide strips, don't forget about the new rulers that I have that makes it so much faster. I didn't have them in this episode. It would, it, that would have laid on top of four layers of that silk or gauze, or whatever the fabric is. I think it's gauze actually is what it is, but uh, laid on there, it would have cut through all of them. Boom, done. Assuming that my rotary blade was sharp. That's always the big one. So hopefully that helps. I answer that question. All right, keep your questions rolling and we'll keep watching. I'm gonna have a bathing suit cover up before this is finished. You just see. And to finish the edges, you have a few options. You could run it through the serger with a three thread overlock, or I'm gonna turn in the raw edge about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, depending on what, you know, what your fabric is. Give it a pressing and then turn it in another. Looks like I used actually more of about a half an inch. Turn it a little bit more. And I'm gonna do that all the way around the sides, the bottom, and the center front edge. Because it's all a straight rectangle. It folds in perfectly. So I'm just gonna do a little section there. Let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you the rest of this. All right, so I have a question for you. Okay, I did the folded hem on that, but what would be some other options? So I did a double rolled. You could do a narrow rolled. If you're on the serger, you could do a narrow overlock. The three thread narrow overlock with decorative thread would look beautiful on that. You just have to be really careful. And I think I mentioned it there, or maybe if I didn't, <laughs> I should have. If you're gonna use a really small rolled edge on the serger on this gauze, what can happen is it can pull, the thread can pull away from the fabric. Have you ever had that happen? You're surging down a, a narrow edge and all of a sudden the fabric starts to fray and your rolled edge is on and then it's off and then it's on and then it's off. There's nothing more of a headache than that because you have to go back and fix it or rip it out and start over or cut it off. And by the time you keep cutting it off, all of a sudden your top is like, was this big and now it's this big. So a rolled hem on the sewing machine or a three thread narrow overlock on the serger. A rolled hem would be fine, just be very, very, very careful. <laughs> All right, let's see what else I got. All right, I have a straight stitch on here, set to, depending on your fabric, this one's a 2.5 stitch. So first I wanna show you how I finish the edges of the entire garment. I've already folded it and pressed it for you. Simply line up your needle right on the edge of that fold here and stitch. Now, if I did this for the next probably 10 minutes, I would have the entire top sewn from end to end. But I just wanted to give you a little visual on this to see what it looks like. So again, you're gonna go around the bottom and both of the arm edges, and this is what you have. So from the wrong side, it looks like this. I'm using contrasting threads so you can see it, different colors on the bobbin and the top, and this would be the right side of the garment. So the edges are finished, they won't fray. Again, you could also use a serger. A rolled edge would be very beautiful on this. So let's go ahead and sew that armhole. If you're having a hard time with all the fabric moving around, where are you sewing? You know, what are you doing? This is like such a huge piece of fabric. What you can do is after you lay it down, maybe on a grid, if you have a cutting mat, so you can line it up pretty straight. Use Taylor's chalk, mark in that area so you know what you're following. I'm gonna use pins as a guide. I'm just going to back stitch and stitch. How much do you close this up? It really depends on you. If you're really nervous, what you can do is baste the stitch, try it on and make sure you like it first. You could also use a decorative stitch if you really wanna be decorative. So I know what you're thinking. Am I stitching from the right side of the garment? or the wrong side of the garment. I have the wrong sides of the fabric together, so I'm stitching from the right side of the garment. So that is your side seam. So once. All right, so I will just take a few more questions. I see some coming up here. Uh, Kim wants to know what brother machine I was using there. You know, I don't remember what season that was, but I could go back in order. It would have either been, either been the Luminaire. I, I don't remember what season. I think it's season 1600. So that would be 
maybe the Stellaire or the Dream Machine. Because that was four, that would have been five years ago. So it might have been the Dream Machine, Dream Machine 2 probably, or the Stellaire. Either or. They're both great machines. I'm looking at the color on there. Oh, it might have been the Luminaire. I'll look closely when you when we go back there again. So just a couple things. Uh, one, the stitch length that I use because it was a gauze, you could use a 2.5. I don't like to go too small. I, I just don't like the look of it. And for the top stitching, for the quarter stitch, for the rolled over, <laughs> not quarter, for the quarter inch rollover and then a double rollover, I used a 2.5 there too. You could also use a 3.0 at that point. All right, Cynthia said, could you do a lettuce edge on the bottom? So the parts that I'm hemming, if I remember correctly, are through the armholes like this. So it's always everything that I'm hemming is on the selvage or either the cross grain, not the selvage, the cross grain or the long ways, long wise grain line. All right. So a lettuce edge really looks better if you're on the bias or if you're on a knit. So to do the lettuce edge on where it's a straight grain, it kind of gets, it's not as good. So I would say I would not. But if you decide to do it, uh, send me a photo. I'd love to see how it looks. All right. Thanks, Arnell. All right. How do you know what needle you need for stitching? So first of all, this, for this fabric, I, I could guess. I don't know what I use exactly on the show. But typically something like this, I will use a standard number 12 needle. And that should work fine on this. Uh, if your fabric's really fine or uh, this gauze, you can kind of see the holes through it if you use too big of a needle. So even a number 11 would be fine. You don't need to go to anything special like a top stitching or a knit or anything like that. This should work just fine with a standard 11 or 12 needle. Should be fine. Make sense? All right, let's, I'll keep taking your questions on here, but let's finish up. As I step back up there, you'll see, but this is where your arm will go. Then you have your head. <laughs> you getting the idea? Yeah, don't forget you have All a head, right? And I just have a couple <laughs> more tips for you on here for the neckline with the bias tape. This always gets a little confusing. I'm just gonna do another small area here. So open with the right sides of fabric together. Open your bias tape up. Let's see if I can find my center opening here. Here we go. So this would be my center front. I'm leaving that open. If you have a closed neckline, go ahead and close that bias binding. You're going to attach it just like you would on a blouse or something. And I'm gonna just stitch. What I'm stitching is right in the center between that fold and the edge of the fabric. I'm just gonna try to get this fabric up here so you can is this see. Like when you say slippery little sucker, it that fabric is all over the place. But I can't say that on TV. <laughs> this fabric's a little slippery. <laughs> and you just wanna make it. sure that you're easing in the neckline into the bias binding. So if you don't, it'll stretch out. So what, if you can notice, I'm pulling this a little tighter and I'm easing in the neckline. If you have a really hard time with that, you could do a stay stitch right around the edge of the neckline to prevent it from st stretching out. So that's your first row of stitching. And I flip this up. I'm going to the wrong side of the fabric. I'm just doing a little section for you. Fold this in again. And you can make this as narrow as you want. It's your, your choice for what your taste is. What I'm doing is I'm folding this in, stitching right on the edge. So I'm stitching one edge. You can see my previous stitch line right on the edge of that. So actually both sides are gonna look fantastic. I'd have to say if my fingers were out of the way, I could see a lot better. But <laughs> since they're not, I basically took one layer of fabric, sewed that, 
And then I rolled over the bias tape, rolled it over twice. So then all the edges are finished. <laughs> if you could see through my fingers, you would have known that. Uh, do, you, do you ever see the, I don't know, I think it was Mystery Science Theater or something where you had the little people down at the bottom. I feel like that now watching this and I'm just cracking up because I know if my brother's on here, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. All right, Vicki, I see you rolled in. And yes, at the beginning of the show, I so showed my entire top here and I did not add anything else to the bottom. I didn't need to, it was already long enough. All right, so keep asking your questions. We're almost finished with the top and I'll try to quit laughing at myself. All right, let's roll. And when you get to the end, I'm just gonna cut off a little bit here because I started in a little bit too far. When you get to the end, you can just tuck your fold under. Now I would probably press this, but I'm just gonna tuck it under so you can see what's going on. Get my fingers out of the way. Oh, thanks, Kim. I thought so, too. <laughs> okay. So that's how you attach the bias binding all the way around the neckline. So I know it's hard to see on the sewing machine. Let's do a recap. On this top here, this is where I attach the narrow bias trim. If this stretches out on you, before you attach the trim, you could do a narrow stay stitch. Just use a small narrow stitch, like a 2.0 stitch from here down and here down. That will keep that from stretching. Then you can see I went through, folded this under and stitched it just like I showed you. At the corners, I just folded it over and kept stitching all the way around. So this went all the way around the edge, the back, pretty easy. And then this area here, this is where I stitched the seam. So you can put your arm and you have a little break. So that's how simple it is to make a kimono. Very cute. Yes, that came off of my YouTube channel. So we're live now though. So if you're on my YouTube channel, by the way, be sure to subscribe and like this. This is behind the scenes, so we're live watching the replay. All right, so do you have any questions on that top? I see uh, some of you said, thank you for answering. You're welcome. And I always, you know, when you're doing that live, I, well, you're live without an audience. Sometimes you're trying to think of what questions you might have. But also, as I watch some of the replays, I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. Or I forgot this. So ask away. I think I, Trudy has a good question here. Let's see, could you use like a quilt binding where you have a double fold, where you sew the binding and then flip it over and top stitch? You could, yes. You just have to be really careful, Trudy, with a garment if that fabric's going to make it too thick. Is it gonna make it too thick and stiff? I want this to be a flowy, not what I'm wearing now, but I wanted that outfit to be a flowy garment. And so if you do that double fold, I'm afraid you're gonna have, that's a double the fabric all the way down the center front. So just be warned and be cautious. So I probably would not, but you could. All right, let's see what else you have coming for me. <laughs> Uh, you know, Arnell, it wasn't so bad, but did you all notice, and let me see if I can bring back just to show you something. When we were taping this, do you want to know the big boo-boo that uh, we should have changed? It's a good show for the machine, but check this out. Well, there, not that. <laughs> Lay it down maybe on a grid. Okay, I'm going to bring you up just a little bit. Do you see over here, uh, like on, look over on the machine. What's there? It's the embroidery hoop. I never took the embroidery hoop off. After doing my previous lesson where I embroidered, I left the embroidery hoop on. Now, two things about that. Yes, you can sew with the embroidery attachment on there. Cool, right? I love that feature because if I'm going from embroidery to sewing to embroidery to sewing, uh, it's not a big deal. Not that it takes very long to change to sewing. You literally just take the side off, okay? But that being said, I didn't realize that was on there until I started sewing. So I've got all of that fabric that usually lays flat because my machine is embedded, usually embedded into the table. I have a feeling, if I look closely, I have a feeling this was the luminaire and it was, if it's not embedded in the table, what happened was we didn't have another table for it to be flush in. So when, when Brother came out with that new machine, we were using Horn Cabinets, they were a sponsor they give us the openings 
for, I mean, they give us different templates for the machine that fits in there. Well, the Luminaire was the biggest machine that they've had. So they had to make a whole new table for it. And I have a feeling this was the episode where it couldn't be flush. So as I used to be, I used to sewing with my machine flush 80% of the time. It depends. If I'm on the set of Craftsy or something like that, I just dealt with what was there. I didn't make a big issue about it because you can sew without it, right? But I had all this fabric and it's falling over the side of the machine. And then I had that embroidery hoop there that I'm trying to slide the fabric and it's getting caught on there. So that's the rest of the story, in case you were wondering. In case you were wondering. Yeah. So it makes it really sloppy. Hey, Lynn. I'll... Karina is right. We do not have a jeans class today. Uh, by the way, I saw some people asking if they could still join the jeans virtual class. Yes, you can. It's there. All the videos are there. Uh, the directions, somebody had asked for written directions. So I decided to go ahead and do that. They're not quite finished. And if I don't have them finished by tomorrow, I'll upload an older version to get you started and I'll upload the new later. It's a video class. So directions were technically not included. I uh, Somebody asked for it and I decided to add it. So it uh, just isn't quite up yet. Lynn, uh, so we have Fashion Sewing Club today at 4.30 this afternoon. So if anybody joins Fashion Sewing Club today that you haven't been a member, be sure to uh, log in right away and click on the Zoom for today. It's at 4.30 Eastern. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Arnell. And Janelle, I'm glad you like the top. I think it turned out great. Now this piece here, or here, I just threw on here to see if we should leave it or take it off. Leave, take it off. Leave, take it off. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it because it kind of ties in. And if any of you missed the beginning, you're probably like, did you seriously just take your shirt apart? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, hey Sharon, do you have any programs that would encourage the younger generation who want to learn how to sew? You know, um, Sharon, I have a ton of YouTube videos. Some for very much beginners. And you might want to scan through some of those. There's like pillows and easy skirts, um, easy projects. So check those out. I don't know of any actual shows off the top of my head, but um, if there's ever a topic that if you have kids at home or you've got kids that you'd like to inspire, just give me a topic and I can see if I can take care of that for you. Add it to my list, right? Okay, somebody just asked, what is the code for the coupon? All right, so let me put this up. Do you guys remember what the code was for last week? It ended last Sunday for the 20% off. But because I just showed the embroidery and somebody had asked about it, I'll keep it. What happened to the pink wedge? Hey, Vicki, there wasn't a pink wedge. This was all of the pink fabric. So I cut the pink fabric. Oh, are you talking about that itsy bitsy? Hold on, let me check. Vicki, this is all that was left of the pink. Came off of here or here. Everything else, so this is all that's left. Should I put that somewhere? Oh, we talked about putting it like here, didn't we? I forgot. Too late, I've already sewed the top together, but I could, I don't know. I think it's gonna have to go. I forgot all about it. <laughs> How do you like that? You're welcome, Sharon. Uh, 4.30 right now, Stacy. it's uh, 2.11 my time. So 4.30 will be in two hours from now, basically. Two hours and 15 minutes. I need to start putting your time zone up there. <laughs> Deborah says leave it. All right, you guys like it. You like it, you like it. Okay. Uh, thanks, Susan. Any tips for beginners? Well, if most of my videos, by the way, show tips if you are a beginner. So, I mean, of course, some of the fashion design might be a little bit past the beginner, but I usually try to explain it that no matter how good or I wouldn't say good or bad, I would say talented or uh, gifted in the sewing side, I try to give tutorials where you can see where I teach you all the way. So no matter if you're a pro or you're a newbie, you should be able to get through, even in the fashion sewing club. Sometimes there might be some tutorials for pattern hacks that maybe a new person might be like, oh, I'm a little confused. But I usually will, well, I answer your questions so it's easy to go through. <laughs> Vicki, I agree. It takes longer to change the embroidery foot than remove the unit. I'm totally with you on that. All right, so let me look up your coupon code for you. 
I saw some of you asking. <laughs> hey, thanks, Pat. Nice to see you. Okay, Nicole, do you have any? Oh, yes, I do, Nicole. You're on Facebook, so go to my YouTube channel. I can think of four or five off the top of my head to show how to make cute halter tops. Uh, one has the halter top with the little tie. In fact, I almost chose that video today. So why don't we do that one next week, just in case you can't find it. It's really cute. It doesn't take very long. I added embroidery to it. Uh, super fun. Hey, Steph, Fashion Sewing Club. You can either join monthly, which right now I think is $14.90 some cents a month, and annual is $159 something, so, and some change. So the annual, you save money. The monthly cost, you save enough in discounts that it well pays for your club membership. I think even for the, I don't remember what the recent class was, they saved enough there to pay for almost two months. So there's discounts in there and three live shows a month plus all the replays. Uh, two lessons each month and then one uh, Zoom where you can see all of your fellow members. It's kind of fun. Uh, Judy, what about fold over elastic? Yes, for that top we just did, you could have done fold over elastic. Yes, you could have. No problem there. Uh, you just would have to be careful that it didn't stretch though, especially going down the center front. So I think for the center front, I would just fold the fabric in and do that nice seam. Fold over elastic at the neckline would be fine. All right, I'm looking up your coupon code here. Um, and before I go, there's the new algorithm now is if you like this video, make sure you like it on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, that's how they will notify you as well. If you haven't subscribed, you want to subscribe. And that's how you'll know if the time changes for any of my shows. You'll be notified because I'm not very good at sending newsletters out each week. <laughs> I try, but I get like a C. All right, so the embroidery, let's see, for 20% off embroidery sale, here you go. The discount code is this, and I will extend it until, because it expired on the 23rd, I'll extend it through what's, how about Memorial Day? I'll change it right now. It's 20% off embroidery and patterns. And it will be good until Monday. Oh, and knit fabrics. Because I added that because of the knits class. So here you go. I think I have it. Bring it up here for you. There's the discount code. And that will be good on the app. And it will be good on Angela Wolf Patterns. So you can see it there. So on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, <laughs> and Twitter. Any of those. Oh, thanks. I think I'm going to leave it too. It's kind of fun. Just different, right? Uh, did you just wrap the piece? So <laughs> Lois, at the beginning, everything else is sewn in permanently. So that's why I'm not going to change that one piece here. So this I took here. Is it UPS guy? I just wrapped it on here to see what it would look like. <laughs> Let's see. There. I could just sew it in. I, it could be a removable. Put some Velcro maybe. I don't know. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dolly. You're always on top of things. And it's capital letters 2022. So I'll make sure I update the app too. That give me a few minutes after the show. Okay, Nicole. Oh, thanks, Stacy. You're awesome. Oh, so Sharon, if you want to make this shirt, we did this last week on our live show. I took, this was a pre-made shirt, and I cut it apart. It was too short, and now check it out. Wrong way. Check it out. It looks great. I love it. I gained that extra, so you can imagine, before I started, this was like really short. It was like this, and I would never wear that. So I wanted a little bit longer. So I could wear it with leggings or jeans, whichever you prefer. All right, any other questions for me? I don't know what that noise is out there. How do you get patterns from dress form? You know, um, I'm not quite sure what you mean on that. I use my dress form to fit my patterns, uh, patterns for myself as I'm fitting for myself. But um, 
If you're more specific, I might be able to help that. Jody, did you find any of that pink fabric? Are you talking about from the It's So Easy episode, Jody? Oh, no, Jody, you're talking about the pink. I found two, and I don't think you're going to like it. So um, I will text you photos. And I meant to do that on Monday. I apologize for that. Thanks for reminding me. And Jody just joined. Welcome to the club. Uh, does the discount include sewn wash? Yeah, Jewel, it does. All embroidery, anything embroidery. It could be my embroidery designs, embroidery stabilizer, knit fabric, and patterns. Patterns, I just got to be uh, a few things. I ran out. I, I don't know. I guess you all loved the pattern so much, <laughs> which thank you. But I ran out of the Shirley Misses, the Rouge T, Kate Skirt, the Linda Tunic, all in the Misses sizes. They're all being printed and they should be shipped by Friday. So I should have them again by Wednesday. So if you ordered in print, just know there's a little delay in shipping. <laughs> thanks, Mary. Oh, thanks for watching, Nicole. Every Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we are live. And there's always something different. Always something different. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, well, I have the jean directions for sale. Hey, Charlene, the jeans is part of a class right now. But once I finish the directions, then the full pattern will, will come out for sale. It's already included in the class. But um, that'll be a little bit. Uh, shipping, or not shipping, Printing is taking forever, though. Hey, thanks for joining, by the way. All right, any other questions? I'm going to let you all go because uh, I hear somebody outside. I better go. Oh, for the mannequin. Let me see what bootstrap fashion for mannequin. I'll get it, Mary. <laughs> all right, so uh, Fashion Swing Club, I will see you in two hours and ten minutes. Uh, we have something very fun planned today. Today's our Zoom. So if you've made one of our awesome tops, did you see some of the tops? Clovis, I think, is the one that made the recent one with the really cool top. It turned out amazing. All right, you got one more second. I'll share it with you. For those of you that have to go, have a wonderful day. But I got to show you this top that Clovis made. Uh, Rita, no, they don't. But... Uh, I give tutorials on that all over the place. So you, I show tutorials on how to do the full bust adjustment. In fact, today uh, we're doing one of those in Fashion Sewing Club because somebody had a question on their knit top. Why do they get wrinkles through here? So I was going to, that's part of a full bust adjustment. So see you later on the Zoom. All right. Um, I have to share this for those, those of you that are still here. This turned out so good. Okay. Clovis, this she looks like she used a sweater knit. Let me see if I can bring this up real quick. Here you go. All right, Clovis, I love this. So last week in Fashion Sewing Club, I showed them how to cut out of an entire top and add a panel. Now this could be great for a dress. It could be great for a top. It could be great for any of those. Uh, I just absolutely love this Clovis, and there were a few other great items shown. Let me see if I can bring a few more up while we're here. You guys have been sewing a lot. I went in there, I was like, oh, I'm so proud of all of you. Sewing away. Here's the Rouge Tea with Clovis. Clovis, you've been sewing up a storm this week. There you go. Super cute. I love the neckline. She was contrasting. That looks like a beautiful rayon fabric, too. And look what she did to the arms. We did that in Fashion Sewing Club. Some of these we've done on behind the scenes and some in the club. It looks fantastic. And then there were some other great ones. But for now, I just had to share those because because I think she's the first one that's shown that top. Uh, Cindy King showed some amazing jean pockets. We'll end it with those because these... Turned out amazing. I love these. Love these. All right. Back to gardening. Nice to see you. Actually, that's what I was doing yesterday, which is why uh, my hands are looking a little bit gardening today. <laughs> Thanks, Peg. I hope so, too. All right, everyone. Oh, I hope you get to go golfing today, too. Janelle, that sounds fantastic. Everyone, have a great day. It was so fun hanging out with you. And I think we should do the tank top next week, how to make a really cute halter top, since that's what you recommended, and add a little embroidery to it. So plan on that for next week. Why don't we review another It's So Easy episode live so you can ask your questions.
All right. Bye, everyone. Thanks for watching.